I hear that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right. Good morning, everybody. Nikki Burnett here, Taste Life Nutrition Radio, streaming live on Taste Life. Uh, on Taste Life. Oh, my goodness. On KUHS Denver. Dot com, uh, where we are, gosh, we're right at 140,000 people now, give or take, maybe more. So uh, having fun reaching some a lot of people with some really great information and some really amazing guests. And that is the goal of this show, is to talk about um, health and wellness in its many many aspects of health and wellness. It's physical, it's mental, it's emotional. It is spiritual and relational, and it's all of the things combined. And my, my goal is to bring to you, are we, uh-oh. So we're getting technical difficulties as always, it's probably my fault. <laughs> uh, but we're, we're here to bring to you the people who are working to serve you, to bring you good health, good information, and allow you to maybe get through some of the junk that you're dealing with. So you have the ability, so we all have the ability to live this big, beautiful life in a, as, as large as we can, as best as we can, for as long as we can, and have some fun. And you know, the people who, who I bring on are the best at what they do. And they have a heart for service, and they have a heart for, for bringing health to the world and uh, my, another goal though is to kind of help you to and me <laughs> to look outside of maybe what is the norm um, there are a lot of really amazing healing modalities out there that maybe a lot of us don't know about haven't heard about or maybe have heard of we don't know what it's all about and you know I think that having your 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 doctor at you know a call away is amazing and good and sometimes we need more and sometimes we don't right so but I in my mind making sure that we have our team which is what I talk to my clients about having our team of practitioners who help us to to get through the junk right I have um, a business coach and she's also a therapist, <laughs> which is super cool. Um, and so having somebody who does, who, who really helps me through a lot of my own junk with, with business. And so we need help, I think, I mean, I think we all need help with business, with health, with wellness, with all of these things. Again, just so we have this big, beautiful life that we live. So sometimes I really rant and I apologize, but this is Rachel. Rachel Spillane, she is the founder of Saraswati Ayurveda. Am I saying that properly? Yeah, you got it. Good, cool. Um, and Ayurvedic medicine is something that I have heard of and I know of, and I know, pra well, I know a couple of practitioners, but I don't know any details. And so when Rachel, and Rachel, I'm gonna tell you, I keep wanting to say Sarah, so. <laughs> That's perfect. Sarah's welcome. Got it. <laughs> um, but when she and I talked, we we are very much aligned. We just kind of come to come at it from a little bit of a different perspective. And one of the things that I love, Rachel, was in looking at your website. One of the things you said is, Ayurvedic medicine is the um, the original functional medicine. And I'm like, that speaks to me. <laughs> it's like my world is looking for the root cause, understanding the root cause, how the body's functioning, why it's functioning as it is, and addressing it and allowing for balance and repair, right? And so that I love that you say that. And so um, I'm going to stop rambling. And Rachel, thanks so much for being here. And I'm grateful. I'm excited to get started. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Nikki. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Um, and I think we have the same mission, right? Finding the yes. root cause of imbalance, dysfunction, and bringing the body and the mind back into balance. Yes. So as you mentioned, Ayurveda really is the first or the oldest form of functional medicine. It's the world's oldest healing science. So it originated in India over 5,000 years ago. And it's based in the five elements, 
air, space, fire, earth, water. And Ayurveda teaches us that we all have all those five elements within our bodies, right? Within our physiology. And it's just, what is that balance for each individual? It's a little bit different, right? Yeah. Some people yeah. are more earthy, some people are more fiery, some people have more air in their constitution. And so we start to see the world around us and ourselves through this lens of the five elements. And in Ayurveda, we have this concept of the three doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha. And they are a combination of the elements, right? So vata is your more airy, pitta is your more fiery, kapha is your more earthy, right? And we start to understand ourselves and the choices that we make um, through this framework, right? And we learn what will take us out of balance and what will bring us back into balance. Um, and so that's what I love about Ayurveda and just sharing this really intuitive wisdom that we can experience in our own bodies. Um, and then just helping people understand, right, what's going on with my blood sugar, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's going on yeah. with my mental cycle? Why can't I lose weight through this very simplistic view of the five elements and what's out of balance and how we can bring ourselves back to that place? I love that. You know, there's so many, there's so many things that people deal with on a daily basis and there is so much confusion on how to get yourself out of it what 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 is it that you can do and knowing and basing that which doesn't make it simple on biochemical individuality who are you um, and you know this is why um, you know we do what we do is because we have learned because we're nerds and we like it but we've learned to dig into what you know who the individual is for each client and what it is that they need so i do it through lab testing um as of course as, as well as you know history and and you know lifestyle and all of the things um and you do it from a different perspective but it still brings that individuality to your practice and to how you deal with clients um Real quick, though, before we get too deep into it, because I, I know that we could just kind of just go, but I, we always start the show with gratitude because talk about, talk about changing the world, and I say this because I think it's true and it's real and it's big, it sounds crazy, but you know, just having, just being grateful for what you have, being grateful for whatever it is, one thing or 400 things, literally can change your mindset, it can change your outlook, it can change your attitude, and it can change your mindset, outlook, and attitude of all of those around you as well. And so um, I talk about you know being intentionally happy. Um, I think that that's very important, and I, with that comes gratitude. So, Rachel, what are you grateful for? Nikki, I am so grateful for summer. Yeah, me too. In Oregon, we had a really long, rainy spring. That up until probably two weeks ago, it was raining most days. And yeah. now everything is so green. The flowers are blooming. I can hear the birds chirping outside of my window here. Um, I am just so happy for summer. Nice. <laughs> I get it. And you moved. You just recently moved from Denver, here in Denver, to Oregon. So a couple of yes. weeks ago? Yeah, we just moved two and a half months ago. Okay, okay, amazing. And how's it going? I love it. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, just different plants for me to nerd out over. Yes. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's we're not quite getting the hot, dry heat that you get in Colorado. Yeah. Um, it will get hot here, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. just a really nice change of pace. And, yeah. Yeah, I'm really fortunate to be in a space where there's lots of trees and green areas so. lush and beautiful that's Oregon and Washington that's what I think of is just lush and beautiful yeah yeah very cool okay so let's jump in um, to to we kind of hit a little bit on the basics of Ayurveda do you want to hit are there other things that we need to talk about before we kind of start to dig in yeah we can absolutely talk a little bit more about those three doshas I mentioned and what balance actually looks like, right? What are the yeah. principles that we apply? Great. Um, so as I mentioned, we each have our own unique mind-body constitution or dosha type, right? Um, and you can understand that by working with a practitioner, 
um, there's different ways to assess your dosha, right? So our physiology, your features, right? Um, Vata individuals are more airy. They're going to have a light, thin frame. They might have wiry, curly hair. Um, they might have more dry skin. Um, and that's kind of the more airy, right, irregularity of their constitution. So you can think of the wind, right? It blows in with a gust of enthusiasm, right? Vata is getting really excited. Um, they're your friends that are very creative and doing a million different things at once. Um, and with that, being mostly an air constitution, right? They lack kind of that groundedness um, that we have with more of your earthy types, right? Yeah. So then we also have Pitta, our fiery individuals, more of a medium build, right? And we can compare the three dosha types to endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph, right. ecto being your vata type, right? Mm -hmm. um, and understanding them that way. So your Pitta individuals uh, have a lot of fire, very driven, very ambitious. Um, tend to have a little bit of excess heat in their body, which can come out as maybe feeling frustrated or critical, right, of themselves and others. Um, more of like your red hair, right? Anyone with red hair, you definitely know they have a lot yeah. of fire in their constitution. Light skin, freckles, sensitive to sun, right? They already have heat, so they're really sensitive to heat. Um, but like I said, kind of that, that fire in their belly, that expression is really about that element of pitta in our constitution. And please remember that we all have, mm -hmm. right, all three, yeah. just what is your predominant. Yeah. And then your kapha is going to be your earth and water type, right? So these individuals are more grounded, right? They're the calm under fire. They're your friend that you call, you know, when you need just a kind listening ear. They're very supportive. You think of the earth element mm -hmm. as building mm -hmm. and supportive. Um, larger body types, um, thick hair, right? Beautiful features, typically your big white teeth, right? Uh, longer eyelashes, things like that is more of your kapha body type. Mm. Um, and so we understand through Ayurveda that opposites balance. Like increases like and opposites balance, right? So if you're a fiery individual and you are eating spicy food, drinking your coffee, alcohol, heating foods, things like that, working really hard, right? That's gonna increase your heat, right? That's gonna increase the fire. So you're gonna get out of balance pretty quickly there. Mm -hmm. So to bring yourself back into balance, you need to apply the opposite quality. So that's gonna be more of your cooling foods, right? Cooling herbs. Here we are in summer. Nature has provided the best medicine for us in terms of seasonal fruit. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of Ayurveda, right? It's really just reconnecting with the rhythm of nature. So eating your seasonal foods, yep. fruits are cooling and sweet and hydrating, right? They help us to kind of take that edge off of <laughs> the excess heat that we experience now we're in July. Um, and so eating cooling foods, herbs, uh, taking things like slowing down, right? Pitches work too hard. They need time to rest and slow down. Uh, time to do things purely for pleasure. <laughs> rather than productivity. Yeah. Um, you know, spending time near running water is really cool to them. So they probably love the ocean and the beach mm -hmm. or swimming. Um, so things like that. So we know that we can use the opposite qualities to bring ourselves back into balance and like will increase like. And so those are kind of the, the fundamental principles, right? Mm -hmm. And we can look at the qualities of foods, uh, the qualities of an environment, the qualities of our day-to-day -day activities as either increasing or decreasing right those elements in our bodies and then how that shows up for us so i mentioned a little bit about pitta excess or excess heat in the body it can show up as that irritability or frustration but also um, on our skin we get rashes right we get sunburns in the summertime more bug bites that kind of itchy heat huh. inflammation anytime we have inflammation right inflamed right there's excess fire in the body um, so kind of hot, swollen joints, for example. Mm -hmm. um, with pitta, loose stools, diarrhea, is excess heat in the body. So people are more prone to that in the summertime. Um, it's because the world around us is heating up. So there's also this concept of, you know, as above, so below, or as in the, as in the macro, so in the micro. So the world around us is really a reflection, um, and we're a reflection of, of what's going on outside. So. so, so many questions. So, <laughs> um, first of 
first question is, I'm super curious if you, and this is like asking a therapist this question, but do you go around and can you see people and do you talk to people and you just kind of know, okay, I know what you are? <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> a little bit, right? Yeah. So it really is a lens through which we can see the world. So yeah. it gives yeah. us that understanding. And Nikki, you mentioned gratitude and the power of that. That's one thing that I love about Ayurveda is we can understand, okay, this person has a lot of heat or a little more pitta, right? And it gives us maybe some empathy or some compassion for maybe the things that they do or the way that they are. And Ayurveda really treat, teaches us to appreciate exactly who we are as a unique individual. That's great. Right? Yeah. So, for example, a kapha body type, more of your earth and water type, right? They're probably never going to be a size zero. But Ayurveda celebrates, right, their body type, their curves, and the uniqueness that is them and allows them to appreciate and embrace exactly who they are. So I think that's really one thing that I love about Ayurveda and sharing that with others. Right? When we understand ourselves through that, it gives us just a little bit more grace. Well, it does, and it's so important because we, we tend to look at other people for to, and compare ourselves. And, and I think right. that that is damaging and detrimental and it's a it's it really can create a problem on our mental and emotional health and and um i love that because we're we're built we're created the way god created us and we're created this way for a reason now are there things that maybe we could do to help that along yeah you know we eat well we we watch the toxicity levels we support our body we go and see practitioners who know how to help us to be at our at our optimal you know um but to to sit back and compare ourselves to somebody who's completely different than we are it just doesn't make any sense and i think it's just super unhealthy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and to know that not everything works for everyone right we yeah. have three distinct types and a myriad of combinations between those Right. So we've seen, for example, with, you know, popular diets or even with fasting, right? It doesn't work for everyone. Right. And that's because you've got to find out mm -hmm. what what is specifically best for you. Right. And Ayurveda yeah. can make recommendations for, you know, maybe how long a fast could be based on your dosha type, your mind body oh, type. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah so kapha types, right, can go longer um, and can really benefit from fasting. Thinking mm -hmm. of the earth and water elements it's slower, it's cold, it's wet. So their digestion is gonna be slower. Mm -hmm. So they can really, you know, maybe skip breakfast, have more of a lunch and dinner type of situation and mm -hmm. that feels really good for them. Most yeah. papas maybe aren't hungry when they wake up in the morning. Yep. So that old adage of eat breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And I think for a lot of people it is. However, if you're not hungry, right? <laughs> Don't eat. yourself to eat <laughs> doesn't work for your no. digestion. No, no, right? no. Hunger is a really good sign of whether your body is ready for more food. Mm -hmm. um, whereas vata types, your airy types, your light and thin, they probably would not benefit from an 18-hour fast, mm -hmm. right? It's really going to affect their blood sugar and their hormones in yeah. a way that doesn't feel good for them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, as you mentioned, that individuality piece is just so important. So you have a, um, a quiz on your website. And so I have a couple questions about because I have it sitting here because I did mine. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait <laughs> to see or hear what you found out. Yeah, it's really kind of fun. And as you're talking through it, I'm like, yeah, no, that's cool. So, but w when you're working with clients and determining their, so their, their main dosha, right? Mm -hmm. Am I saying that properly? Um, do you do you give them a quiz like this, or is it more of a more detailed kind of intake that helps you to to really dig deep into their doshas? Yeah, so the latter. So we, we do more of a an assessment. Um, so there are some questions, you know, that I ask them ahead of time. Um, you know, uh, does your skin burn easily? Do you have freckles, moles, things like that, mm -hmm. right? But in the initial consultation, I'm assessing their their doshas based on the information that they're telling me, mm -hmm. right? How their digestion is, uh, what they're describing to me, mm -hmm. um, what I'm observing. And when we meet in person, we do Ayurvedic pulse reading. So I listen for yeah. the energies in their pulse, mm -hmm. right? The radial pulse. Mm -hmm. And um, much like acupuncture, right? If right, you've ever yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they're listening and they're telling you, uh, maybe it's more thready or wiry or uh, whatever they're listening for. 
um, we can learn that way. Um, I can also learn by just looking at their tongue, for example, yep. uh, not only how their digestion is going, but probably what their constitution is, right? And so there are just some features that tend to stand out, um, the manner in which someone is speaking, right? <laughs> their personality, uh, understanding a little bit more about how their mind works, their thought processes. These are all really good indicators of what their dosha is. I love this, and I I um I feel like, and I'm going to just say this because I think it's true that that doing a little bit more study on this just for myself and working with clients, I think would be smart for me to do. I mean, I love that you that that it's a I love the physical constitution, and then the I mean, like I said, you know, I can I can I look at it really in depth analysis and I can look at lab work but I like all of the other stuff I like all of the stuff that you're talking about I just think that's so eye-opening and so fun um, so I, I'm gonna dig into that a little bit you are on the board yes of the Colorado Ayurvedic Medical Association yes I am a member I was on the board and okay. um, so there's a National Ayurvedic Medical Association, and then also in Colorado, we had our own professional association cool. um, of other practitioners, Ayurvedic mm -hmm. doctors, people that are in school, um, and people that just want to learn more and support the profession of Ayurveda, yeah. um, which is wonderful. As you know, being able to collaborate with colleagues, uh, share mm -hmm. case studies, yes, right? yes. professional development yeah. is so important, yeah. and just refining our practices. So are you an Ayurvedic doctor? I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner. Practitioner, okay, okay. Just wanna make sure that I'm getting it all clear. <laughs> so I have found out that I am 62% kapha, 23% vada, and 15%, I can't see, 15% vida. Awesome. Yeah, you absolutely have the kapha with like your long, thick, beautiful hair. I think your groundedness, uh, your patience, um, you know, a lot of the kapha qualities come out for us women as mothers. Okay, yeah. Um, I was an elementary school teacher, oh. right? And so kind of that relational aspect, kapha is really the glue that holds things together. Um, and as I mentioned, that groundedness, that support mm -hmm. that we really get from the earth element. So um, that makes a lot of sense to me, Nikki. Cool. Are you Kapha as well? Yes, I'm Vata and Kapha. Kind of those polar opposites okay. together is me. <laughs> oh, fun. Very cool. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to get into some of the questions that I have. Maybe we do this real quick, though, before we do. Um, and take our quick break to talk about our sponsors, or a, our sponsor, uh, because they're super cool. Um, and I know that you use herbs. Um, I have a good friend of mine who does Chinese herbs. And so I'm assuming that they're, well, I'm getting into a different, I, I was, <laughs> was going to start totally going into what I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to stop and talk about <laughs> our sponsor because they're a supplement company. So yeah. that's kind of where my mind started going was at the at the herbs, which I just I love. Um, I just think it's cool stuff and such amazing medicine. But Cellcore Biosciences, um, do you know or use Cellcore products? Is that outside of your world at all? Or I'm not familiar. You're not? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, Cellcore is one of my favorite companies, if, if probably not my favorite company, because of the innovative products that they bring to the table. Um, my goal, uh, and, and anybody in this world, is to, as we talked about, look for the root cause and really dig into the foundation of health. And this company, they're, they're innovative due to the, um, the, the delivery system that they use to get the herbs and the nutrients into the cells at the deepest level, which affects cellular, cellular health, mitochondrial health, um, as well as our genetic and epigenetic health and, and, and expression. And so when we can dig in and, and allow the body to heal and repair from the bottom up, then all of these other things, so I look at it as, as a tree, and so we've got the root cause down here, and so we address whatever these one or multiple root causes are, and then the body has the ability to do all of the other stuff up here because it, it doesn't have to 
focus any longer on all of these things that are going down, on down here, we allow that to repair and then the body can do its job in a much more efficient, productive manner. So that's cell core. They're amazing at what they do. Uh, they balance the body. Um, they allow the, they, they pull out toxins that sit in our tissues and clog up our liver. They have amazing antimicrobials. Believe it or not, many of us have a lot of worms that we're dealing with. And I know it's a hard one to hear, but I'm gonna say it regularly because it's important for us to know that we don't eat the way that we used to eat to allow our body to expel pathogens. And mm. yeah, and so when we, when we get to the foundation, a lot of times that foundation or that root cause is parasites, it's worms, uh, it's, it's, you know, at minimum bacterial infections, yeast infections, things like that, that can create real problems for us. Um, and so I love what they do. I love what they're about. You can only get their products through practitioners. Um, and I would tell you that that's the only way that you want to do it anyway, because they're very strong and they work really well. <laughs> so we want to make sure that uh, you are using them properly and uh, you're getting what you need out of them. So with that being said, uh, I'm grateful for Cellcore and let's talk about herbs. And so my question was, you know, I know so little about Chinese herbs and then my question was going to be a few minutes ago when it comes to Ayurvedic herbs. I know, so one's Chinese and one's Indian, so obviously differences there. Are there similarities? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And there's a lot of overlap. Mm -hmm. Right, so some really common important herbs we have in both traditional Chinese medicine and in Ayurveda. One would be licorice, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. You take in Chinese herbs, there was probably licorice in your formula, mm -hmm. not only to help you with the taste, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. to kind of smooth things over, support your gut, and it's just a really nice kind of rounding out of the formula. So licorice has amazing antiviral, antimicrobial properties. Um, licorice is really supportive for our gut. It has what we call mucilage, mm -hmm. right? So it helps support your gut lining and the gut environment. Um, when we think about herbs in Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, a lot of times we're using the same approach, right? Whether this herb is heating or cooling is one of the first questions we ask ourselves, right? Um, and then what are the other properties, right? Does it go to work on the lungs? Licorice does. Licorice mm -hmm. helps the body to expel mucus yep. from our lungs, right? Mm -hmm. So licorice tea when you're sick, when you have phlegm in your throat, can be really supportive. Um, so which areas of the body, which tissues does it act on? And kind of what is the action? And so that's really one of the ways that we approach herbs within Ayurveda. Um, and then we're looking at kind of what, what are the specific properties and, and how do we want that to act? then how are we taking the herbs? So you mentioned cell core biosciences, the kind of way that it's packaged or delivered mm -hmm. is really helpful for absorption. We think of the same thing with herbs. And this is what I see a lot now that Ayurvedic herbs are becoming more popular. People can buy a giant bottle of ashwagandha, which is maybe the yeah. buzziest. Turmeric and ashwagandha are yeah. probably the buzziest or most popular. Ayurvedic herbs that we're hearing about now. Mm -hmm. And you can buy a big old bottle at Costco and take those capsules. Please don't. However, Please don't. <laughs> it's strong medicine, yeah. okay? You should be working with a practitioner because that, it's very heating, for example, ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. It's hard for your liver to digest and you might be wasting your money, yeah. right? If you're taking herbs in a way that it's not digestible for you or it's not right for you, you're probably not gonna get the desired result. So in Ayurveda, we do um, formulations where we're blending together herbs for their synergistic effect, mm -hmm. right? When I pair these two together, they know to work on the lungs in this way, or they know to support the reproductive system in this way. Um, so blending herbs, maybe six or seven different herbs is one way that we do it. Mm -hmm. um, we also think about how you're taking it. So whether it's a decoction, you're boiling the herbs with hot water. Um, if you've taken fresh Chinese herbs, you probably had to boil them um, and, and sip on that several times a day. Um, tea, right, is an infusion. So taking herbal tea, that's one of the easiest and most effective ways to take your herbs because the heat, right, helps your body to digest that and absorb that when we're boiling the herbs. Um, we do medicated ghees where we're infusing mm -hmm. herbs into I ghee. I love that. 
Yeah, uh, there's medicated oils where we can apply those to the body topically. Um, and oil is so important in Ayurveda. We'll talk a little bit more about why and the qualities of that. Um, medicated milks, if you've ever had golden milk, mm -hmm. right, in the evening, your turmeric, yep. all those spices into the milk, because we're using the qualities of the milk or the ghee or the honey or the oil to support the delivery and to work on the mm -hmm. tissues in the way that we want it to. Yeah. Sometimes if we're just taking a capsule of dry herbs, like trifola, for example, mm -hmm. it can be too drying on the system, right? So we want to pair that with something like ghee that has that unctuous quality. Um, so yeah, herbs are something I could nerd out and talk yeah. about all day. <laughs> but your original question, right, there is a lot of overlap. And we have the traditional Indian herbs, um, but we can also use the same framework to look at herbs and plants that are growing locally mm -hmm. where you are, right? And more of your traditional Western herbs, right? Understanding lavender, right? Uh, rose, some of the uh, nettles, some yep. of the herbs that we can grow here that are so supportive. Mm -hmm. um, and we can apply that same lens to those and how we use them. Nice. I love that. And I know, I know herbs fairly well. Well, huh? not actually, that's not true. I, I know the ones that we use here in supplement form and that are already typically combined, but it makes so much sense to, spe to specify right for each person what they actually need which is why I was always so um, I, I loved what my my friend in acupuncturist and well she's doctor of Chinese medicine so she knows and mixes the medicinal herbs all the time and she just knows it I'm like this is the coolest thing and I have no idea <laughs> yeah I love as that. a practitioner yeah. you really mm -hmm. establish relationships with these plants and yeah. learn how using them uh, mm -hmm. works differently for different people and you know, usually we're starting with ourselves, yep. right? There's yep. all kinds of trial and error. Mm -hmm. um, and just understanding what is the physical, the mental, emotional, and spiritual experience of taking this herb before we're going to give it to someone else. So that's, uh, you know, that was a huge part of my three years of study of Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. was learning about the herbs, using the herbs, blending them, cooking with them, mm -hmm. growing them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a big piece. That's amazing. I love that. So we went into this conversation, um, or you know, I guess in, in the marketing, it was women's health, and so I want to start to dig into that because, for one, you know, Ayurveda is for everyone. So, uh, but you know, as 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 practitioners, I see, well, as a practitioner, I see men and women, but most of my clients are women, um, and a lot of what I talk about is about women and maybe about their cycle or about fertility or just women's health in general. Um, I know I realize that's a lot of who I'm speaking to, but I think a lot of times it's because I relate <laughs> as I am I'm one. Really. Yeah. <laughs> and so I know that that's, um, you speak and work mostly or entirely with women as well. Yes, most of my clients are women. I absolutely work with men mm -hmm. as well, um, but I think it speaks to the great need for support for women's health. Yeah. And that our traditional, you know, Western medicine systems have often failed women. Um, not to be disparaging, but when we think about most of the research, most of the clinical studies, all of the funding, it's, yeah. it's going towards men. <laughs> so when we, even now, you hear about the benefits of ashwagandha, right? That it lowers cortisol, that it helps you sleep. That's because these clinical studies that are paid for by supplement companies are done on men, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so they're not actually looking at how does ashwagandha affect women's hormones? Mm -hmm. So this is an example of an herb that women might be taking without knowing that it actually boosts testosterone. So it's not right for all women. Uh, yeah. People that are dealing with PCOS, for example, mm -hmm. maybe not your best bet to be taking ashwagandha. Sure, it will mm -hmm. help with sleep. It will help with cortisol. Uh, but it does have other effects. And so I think a lot of the challenges that women now are facing are because our Western medical system doesn't support them on an individual basis. Right. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you're dealing with menstrual issues, the solution they give is to take birth control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not a solution, right? We know that's treating some of the symptoms, but that's not getting to the root cause of the dysfunction. 
It's really, I, I, I have talked about this over the last couple of days, like on Facebook Lives and that kind of thing, but it's really, it's a frustrating thing, thing to see in practice when women come to me, they have been put on birth control and they're not cycling. Like they're, mm. they're not bleeding. And, and I, I have this, as probably most people in our world do, but this real issue with taking away what has been given to us. So mm. taking away a cycle, taking away tonsils, taking away gallbladders and thyroids and, and appendix and saying, oh, it's fine. We don't really need them. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I mean, I'm like, how is it possible that we don't need them when they were put there intentionally? Right. Um, and so in talking about women's health and the lack of, and I'm going to ask you this because it's just not coming to me, but I'm, I'm curious to your opinion, the lack of menstruation. What do you see, whether it's, 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 a, it's a hormonal imbalance or it's because of birth control pills, do you see anything in practice that, that women start to go through if they're not having their monthly cycle? Absolutely. What yeah. do you see? And that's that's actually how I found Ayurveda, Nikki. I went off hormonal birth control in my 20s and lost my cycle for several years. And wow. I'd go to the doctors and they'd be like, mm, you don't need it unless you're trying to get pregnant. And I was like, mm, well, seems like this important biological function that yeah. women have every month yeah. for, you know, 30, 40, sometimes 50 years. Right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty important. And um, when we look at the menstrual cycle in Ayurveda, we, we know that it's called a moon cycle, right? <laughs> For a reason, mm -hmm. right? Every 28 days approximately, right? Our hormones are going through four pretty distinct phases, right? Each mm -hmm. week is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, and so honoring the female reproductive system and understanding that it's a natural cleansing, right? It's our body's chance to release. Um, are we call the reproductive system archiva in, in Ayurveda and there's a deep emotional and spiritual component to that right to our uterus to our womb space and understanding what is being cleansed not just physically mm -hmm. uh, the lining and the blood of the uterus but emotionally uh, every month and without that right mm -hmm. we're not having this opportunity to kind of process and release and we're not having that connection to something that makes us uniquely female or yeah. feminine. Um, and so mm -hmm. I think that, that, yeah, that's really important. And, and a lot shows up uh, when we don't address what is the root cause of why a woman is missing her cycle? Yeah. Why is it irregular? Mm -hmm. Or so many women I see now are dealing with incredibly painful and heavy oh periods. Oh gosh, I know. Uh, or PCOS, mm -hmm. right? And all of these illnesses are just becoming much more prevalent mm -hmm. in this day. And I think it comes back to that piece where we live in a society that doesn't fully support and honor women, right? We live in a patriarchal, capitalistic society where women are expected to perform as men at their jobs. And, you know, at the home space also take over being a mother, being a caretaker. Um, and so I think that Ayurveda really teaches us to come back to honoring mm -hmm. what we need, mm -hmm. honoring our feminine uh, characteristics and aspects. And, and we all have masculine and feminine energies, mm -hmm. right? But when we think of the qualities of the masculine energies, it's productivity, it's doing, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's achieving, um, it's go, go, go. Um, and whereas the feminine is more your intuitive side, your receptive side, it's a need for slowness. It's a need for nurturance and being taken care of um, and listening, a deep listening. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's really common that we're seeing the feminine being out of balance um, when we look at kind of masculine and feminine energies. Yin and yang, right? Yeah. Those are really yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it can be, and I think um, as, as a woman, as an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, as someone who is driven, but also then a woman, we, I feel like, and I'm saying this only for me, um, but there is the need to push and to, to build and to grow and to be great at what I do and to do all of the things and it's really freaking hard. <laughs> and I think it's really freaking hard for anyone. 
but we do have these these ups and these downs due to the hormones that we have where there are times that we are we, we go to more of a place where we need to withdraw and to be mm -hmm. calm and I think it's important I, a lot of what I think too is that we with food with our emotions with our environment with our cycles with our hormones we've lost or we just don't pay attention but it, I say this we lost our we've lost our ability to 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 listen to our body to hear our bodies our bodies are talking to us all the time and when we don't take the time to think what does this pain mean why do I have this headache why are my PMS symptoms much worse than they used to be um, mm. why why am I having such pain during my cycle that I have to go to the emergency department I mean you know and what I hear I have a client I have in my head right now who um, that was a situation for her her doctor put her on a birth control pill then put her on another birth control pill and she called me going I this is horrible to say but it's, it was it was messing with her but she's like I just had suicidal thoughts and I was like okay mm -hmm. time for you to figure out a way to get off of these birth control pills because they are really messing with your mind and your body and so often we're given drugs and hormones in a in, in the thought is it's just in a vacuum you know it doesn't affect anything else it's just gonna help you not bleed or or not have so much pain or whatever when so many people and for me for sure was I experienced I was like I don't like he was my boyfriend at the time my husband now I was like I don't like him as much as I used to <laughs> and it was terrible I mean and I'm grateful that I realized that and got off the pill and everything was fine but when somebody he was like was it very funny and he is a funny dude <laughs> so anyway I I the biggest piece of that is just that we've lost touch and we think that okay well I'm just need an Advil or I just need a pill or I just need a whatever instead of saying okay there's something going on how can I understand my body what's going on why it's happening what can I do to help it hmm absolutely yeah yeah we stopped listening we've also been trained to look for those answers outside of ourselves yes right? so something's yes. going on let me get on WebMD yeah, oh my goodness right yeah. <laughs> Right. And Google that. Mm -hmm. And no shame there. We've all done it, right? Yeah. But like you said, we need to come back to that place of wondering, being curious. So what's going on in my body? What am mm -hmm. I being shown here? Mm -hmm. What What is this experience teaching me? Or what is my body trying to tell me? Yeah. Um, and what's different, right? I have clients that, you know, within a month or two of working together, just doing a little bit of lifestyle adjustments. Mm -hmm. Uh, they notice right their cycle is less painful mm -hmm. and it's because they're giving themselves an opportunity to process what's happened right our, our monthly cycle is that way to process kind of what's happened during that month or they're syncing their cycle with those four phases that I mentioned mm -hmm. right we can think of our menstrual cycle as the four seasons right so we have kind of the peak is your summer is your ovulation right things yep. are great we're feeling uh, confident, high sex drive, mm -hmm. looking good, feeling good. Right. It's a great time to do your speaking engagements, right? Your yeah. your brain is really firing on all cylinders work-wise, right? And then after that, our feel-good hormones start to drop off. As you mentioned, kind of that time to withdraw and come back to ourselves that fall, right? Where mm -hmm. we start to kind of mm -hmm. slow down. Yep. <laughs> and then winter, right? When you're bleeding, uh, honoring that time and so I think for a lot of women we're expected to pretend like we don't have a, a monthly menstrual cycle like we're not bleeding and not mm -hmm. honoring that time to slow down and rest and really give our bodies that deep nourishment mm -hmm. uh, and so when we can incorporate that things start to feel a bit more balanced yeah you had said a few minutes ago um, I believe you said this was you know when, oh, when someone doesn't have a period that so often they're just said, well, it's okay, it's not that big a deal unless you want to get pregnant. I have a client who experienced just that. Um, it's this very interesting situation where she's 30, mid-30s, and has never had a period on her own. Mm. And not due to the pill or not due to anything else, she's just never had it. And I had just red flags. I'm like, what is happening? And how is this happening? And why is this happening? And 
she's telling me she wants to get pregnant and you know all the all that her her doctor is going to do is put her on drugs so she actually starts her period and she'll bleed like crazy for a really long time and then you know this you know chemically sort of go through this process when we've been working together now for probably three months I believe um, and two weeks ago she had her first real period and Wonderful. it was maybe one of the most exciting things that I've experienced mm -hmm. when it's something that's that big and that important and it's never happened in her life and she's like I just had my first period I'm like this is like amazing and I keep talking about it now I did a Facebook live on yesterday because it's so phenomenal that when you give the body what it needs you allow it to balance she had severe micronutrient deficiencies she had lots of inflammation mm -hmm. severe omega-3 omega-6 imbalances you know and so you start to bring this stuff in balance and then again get to that foundation and that root cause the body's like I got this okay yes. I can do it yeah and it is worth <laughs> celebrating I yes We've been shamed about our menstrual cycles for so long and taught to hide it, but it yep. really is, is a celebration mm -hmm. of, wow, all of these incredible processes my body is going through every day, mm -hmm. every week, every month. Um, and like you said, it's a really important sign of nourishment. Yeah. So in Ayurveda, we mm -hmm. think of the different body tissues as being nourished from kind of a top down, right? So first is our plasma, our lymph, then our blood, then our muscles, then our bone, our nervous tissue, right? The very last tissue to be nourished in the body is our reproductive tissue. Because if nourishment is not making all the way down there, right, our body, our mind, we're not in a place to conceive and support and nourish children, right? So if there's any dysfunction, any toxins that are blocking, any inflammation that's preventing what we eat from kind of that trickle down process to really nourishing those deep tissues, then cycle goes missing or we're dealing with PCOS, we're dealing with painful periods, heavy periods. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, allowing the body really to have that space and that nourishment to come back into balance. It is worth celebrating and mm -hmm. we are so resilient. The human yeah. body is just absolutely incredible. It's amazing. I just had my first baby. She's almost Yay. five months and just witnessing and experiencing mm -hmm. not only the changes that I went through in such a short amount of time, but her growth and all the things that yeah. she's doing in such a short amount of time. It really is so incredible mm -hmm. and I think that we need to come back to this place of reverence and respect and appreciation for our bodies mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that they do for us mm -hmm. it's a true miracle I mean um, the uh, the body itself is a miracle I mean you talk about daily miracles the fact that it functions and it does all the things that it does to me mm -hmm. is just it's truly miraculous but then the fact that we have the ability to create and mm -hmm. I, I and it, and it works so well most of the time you know um, that's where it's interesting because I don't have kids and I come at, at at fertility when I'm working with fertility clients at a little bit of a different perspective um, and it's it's this it's it's the it's really the preconception care perspective that I come from because what I know is if we take our time during this preconception care and we give our bodies the ability to to balance and to repair what needs to be repaired and to give it the support and to to you know reduce stress and deal with trauma and do all of these things that brings us to a level place as much as possible you know because if we have if we're anxious baby's probably going to be anxious and have a lifetime lifetime of anxiety so that's just a small example. But what what hits it for me that gets me so excited, I mean, this is this is kind of my why in what I do. I, and I'm not sure where this comes from, but is epigenetically looking at the the ability of, of our bodies when they are where they are today, the health of our body today, it impacts seven generations down. And so that's what the data shows us. It literally impacts our health today, good or bad, has an impact seven generations down. And in my mind, I'm like, if we take that little bit of time to get as healthy as possible, the m amount of power that we have to create a healthy future is mind blowing. Mm. It's truly amazing to me. And that's why I love 
when I'm working with fertility clients or when I'm, you know, it's, it's really about that preconception. Let's take the time. Let's have some patience. A lot of people are like, no, I need it. And I got to have babies now and it's time and I'm 45, yeah. and, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm like, let's stop because we want that baby to, we want pregnancy to be successful. We want that baby to be successful and we want those future generations to be successful. So let's take a step back and just be calm about it. Yeah. I'm right there with you. The <laughs> yeah. preconception is so important. Yeah. I mean, you get the analogy of gardening. Yeah. Right? Or planting crops, mm -hmm. right? If you want the seed to grow, you first have to clear the soil, yeah. right? Remove the toxins, stagnation, whatever is stuck there and going to prevent things from implanting. Mm -hmm. And so we look at the uterus, right, as kind of that fertile ground, that yeah. soil mm -hmm. um, that we really need to nourish and take care of. And it is so worth it to slow down yeah. <laughs> and yes. take the time. It might be, you know, two or three months. Otherwise, you could get into it and you're going to spend six months, 12 months trying to conceive and end up, you know, needing support with that. So like you mentioned, it's, mm -hmm. it really is this opportunity to provide nourishment for not only ourselves, but for our future generations. Yeah, it's true. I wish I could remember it. There was a study that was done, um, but it was, I can't remember what it was right now, but it was a study done on preconception care and just take like I said, taking that time, um, decrease the the amount of, of I'm just gonna call it dysfunction right so it's the overarching mm -hmm. outcomes that could happen that are the negative outcomes um, and it decreased it significantly it was huge so um, you know I know that we're not all in a place you know sometimes things happen but but really if you are in that prep stage you know taking that time I think is is huge I want to real quick hit on digestion, um, and yeah. I want to hit on that. I know because it's that's part of your story as well. But one of the things that you said was, if all of these things aren't functioning properly, then uh, you know the, the the reproduction is the last thing in the, on the list. It's sort of way down here because your body's got to be able to support another little person. And so I think it's important to understand that when there are digestive issues, and you may not even know, you, if you have some mental, emotional, some, some depression and anxiety, a lot of that can be digestive issues and you just don't know it. And I think it's important to, again, it's, it's that take a step back and find someone who can help you understand it. But if your digestion is not working properly, you're not breaking down your nutrients, you're not absorbing your nutrients, um, which I, I believe is a lot of what was going on with my client. <clears throat> and then that in and of itself can create an inflammatory response because your body's like, I don't have the stuff that I need to get going every day, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so when you have digestive issues and you're not utilizing your nutrients, it, it plays a huge role in fertility. Um, also, when we deal with something that we have probably all heard of by now, the leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability, this is the beginning in many, many cases of autoimmune conditions. And people mm -hmm. who are dealing with infertility often have undiagnosed autoimmune conditions. And so I'm just kind of, I'm a little bit curious about your story because you were dealing with both digestive issues and hormonal stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I know you deal with it a lot in practice as well. What, what's, what's your story with that? And, and then of course, anything else you want to add to that? <laughs> Yeah, good question. So Ayurveda really believes that all disease begins and ends in the gut, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For over 5,000 years, Ayurveda has been preaching the importance of gut health yep. and digestion. We think of our digestion as a fire, or agni, we call it, right? And that needs to be burning strong to digest the food that we're consuming and to absorb it. Um, and when that dysfunction happens, you mentioned toxins can build up, right? We can get leaky gut things are sitting too long. Fermentation can lead to parasites, right? Um, dysbiosis was actually how I found Ayurveda. I was dealing with my microbiome before I was out of balance mm -hmm. uh, from many factors. Um, antibiotics from a very young age, I found out that yeah. I had my first antibiotics at three months old for an ear infection and some choices in my 20s that did not support my microbiome, right? <laughs> I would drink diet soda, I drink alcohol, yep. Yep. Um, you know, in excess on weekends, and I was stressed. So all of these factors led to candida yeast 
um, an opportunity to overgrow, right, and get out of balance. So I found Ayurveda like so many of us do, searching for answers on the internet. Um, I just wasn't feeling good. I had brain fog. I My blood sugar had always been pretty unstable. Um, and so my mood, of course, depended on that. And I would get really hangry, cranky. Um, and I started noticing I was having loose stools, right? Loose bowel movements for several months, which was not my normal. Normally, I would tend more towards constipation um, in most of my life experience. So Ayurveda helped me to understand, right, that drinking warm drinks supports my digestion, that that's why warm tea felt so good to me, that raw foods actually were not supported for me at that time because I did not have the ability to digest them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was no coincidence, right, that mm -hmm. while I was experiencing this, I also did not have my menstrual cycle, right? Mm -hmm. um, blood sugar was a huge piece of that, stress, cortisol, right, of course, affecting our hormones and our reproductive hormones. So mm -hmm. when we're in a very stressful environment, I was a fifth grade elementary school teacher, and as much as I loved my job, right, it was stressful for me, and I didn't have the tools to really manage that. So um, that was how I oh, found Ayurveda. Okay. Okay. And um, just bringing my gut back into balance, I felt immediate difference in my mood, right, in my sleep, um, and it was just learning how to eat foods in a way that were supportive for me and slow down and digest my food so I could get that nourishment. Awesome. So I, <laughs> so we have another person, uh, an amazing uh, Dr. Lisa who comes on after me and mm -hmm. I didn't realize that today was her day. So she's on every other week and I just, and I was just told that we need to wrap it up. So <laughs> I know, I just looked at the clock. We could talk all day. And I, I know, <laughs> I know. It's so much fun. And let's do, let's have some more conversations about this because I think it's really important. I want to learn more um, and I want to, uh, I want others to learn more as well. I think this is a great way of looking at the body and our, our individuality. So um, my apologies for cutting it short, um, but I want really quickly for you to make sure everybody knows where you can be found and how to reach out to you. Yes, so my website, which is saraswatiayurveda.com, and I'm sure that will be linked on the show notes, um, is the best way to connect. I offer free discovery calls to chat with people to find out if working together is a good fit. I do one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, you can also take that dosha quiz that you mentioned there, Nikki, just to yep. start to understand a little yep. bit of what is that picture of you, right? Um, and lots of great recipes, blog articles on my website. I talk a lot about women's health and the cycle and the Ayurvedic perspective on that. Yep. So if you're intrigued and want to learn more and understand, you know, what are these symptoms showing up and how does that relate to the elements? What is that a balance for me? Um, and then also on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, saraswati.ayurveda, there you can find me. Um, and I'm love connecting with people i love sharing about ayurveda so please reach out with your questions i'm happy to share more awesome thank you so much and again my apologies for cutting this short um of course this is uh taste life nutrition radio on kuhsdenver.com you can find me at taste life nutrition anywhere you look it, or not anywhere you look but anywhere there's a social media the website whatever it is it's going to be taste life nutrition i also have a free uh, assessment and programs and workshops and all the fun things. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week Thanks on Thursday, 10 a.m. Thank you so much, Rachel. Rachel, I appreciate you so much.